Broadcasting from the PLA Situation Room in Roy, New Mexico. You're listening to The Snowplow Show. Now it's time. On Prank Call Nation. Cactus, 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 cactus. I ain't playing games. Cactus, 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 cactus. Am I supposed to be doing this? Cactus, 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 this cocksucker. Cactus, 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 cactus. You've got to be crap on my ball. Cactus, 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 cactus. This going to be a fuck job to edit. Cactus, 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 cactus. You're calling me a hobo. Cactus, 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 cactus. You think a train circuit can stop me? Hey everyone, this is Roy and you're listening to the Snowplow Show. This show is sponsored by Michael Foster, our favorite Australian, who is a Patreon member. Thanks, Michael Foster. Today I'm going to go through some requests, get a few requests done. Turn down the music because I always forget to do that. I'm going to start the show though with a, uh, a a clip. I think it's a 10 minute clip. Uh, this is the one that um, Hazel was looking for. Hazel, like uh, a couple shows ago, said she was looking for this clip where uh, somebody tricked a um, a BlackBerry user into praying for their phone and trying to put it in the microwave or something. I don't remember exactly what happens in this clip. But uh, someone, a listener named Micah, found the call that Hazel was looking for. It was from the January 25th, 2011 after show of the phone show. Uh, That's the show that we used to do immediately after the phone show, where we just all get on a conference together and do wacky calls. If you go to the, if you go to that episode though, the after show, it's 33 minutes and 48 seconds into the show. So let me pull that up and we'll play it right now. Because that's what everyone tunes into this show for, right? To listen to old shit? All right, here it is. Dad Matrix in full Hello? Effect. Hey, Justin. Hey. Hey, how's the new cell phone? Um, a little glitchy. Um, I actually have a problem with, like, getting angry birds to work. Oh, that sucks. You need to, like, turn that in. Like, take it back. Or a jailbreak. Yeah. Do you want us to help you jailbreak? <laughs> what? Would you hey, like? Um, have you have you tried uh, restoring the phone? Yes, I, I've restarted the phone. I have. Uh, no, no, no. The reason I'm calling is um, the second level tech um, referred me to you. But have you tried restoring it? So, by the way, if you're confused about this, this is a guy who posted on Twitter or maybe on Facebook. He said, "Oh, my Blackberries. I I, I got a new Blackberry." And uh, so we call him up, and uh, it ends up being Gordo uh, pretending to be a BlackBerry tech or an AT&T tech or whatever, and helps him out with his phone problems. So let's continue. Restoring it. Yeah, sometimes the battery will get so drained it needs to be recharged. Um, One thing you can do, you have to take the case off for this, though. Do you have a microwave near you? It's it's a way to kind of jumpstart the battery, get the battery chemistry back in, in sync. Um, do you, do you, wait, wait, wait. wait. Do you, okay, so what, the first thing we're going to try um, is a second level reset. Can you grab the phone? Um, just leave us on the speaker, that's fine. And just shake it vigorously. It, it has to be kind of hard because we're trying to reset the memory cells. That's what she but, said. I mean, not so hard that you, you let go of it, of course. Okay. Just, just kind of like an up and down arc. Right. In rapid su- succession. Can you tell me when you've done that? Okay, you want me to shake it, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, by the way, sir? Eric, yes, yes. Um, to let you know, the droid worked. It, so it did work? Yes, the droid worked. My friend was able to actually load his phone up to it. Okay, because what I had in my notes is that it wasn't functioning at, at all, but that's that's good to hear. It looks like we won't have to replace the entire phone, maybe possibly just the battery. But um, is there any way you could um, – do you have a your friend's phone handy? Does he have the same yeah. one? Okay, could could you take his battery out for me? You know what? Blah, 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 blah. I'm, I'm going to fast forward because I, I don't want to play this entire clip. Sometimes extreme temperature can lock it back in place. 
Um, are you at home right now? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, are you near the kitchen? Yes, I'm near the kitchen. Okay. Um, it's fine if there's a brief silence. Can you place it into the freezer? Not for very long. We don't want to like freeze it solid. Not for like a whole half hour or anything. But maybe just two minutes in there, and I'll just hold the line while you do that. Okay. And I will hold the line waiting for you. It's it's fine. I'm off the floor, so. Okay, I'll do it for two minutes. Okay, I'm doing it now. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, now we want to shake it once more, and can you tell me if the battery meter, it should slowly start to rise? Are you seeing any difference? Is it? No, I'm not seeing any difference. Okay. Um, there's a couple other things we can we can try. Um, do you have the phone with you? Are you are you on the phone right now? Um, yeah, I'm currently on the phone that's being worked on. Okay. All right. Um, and I'm on speakerphone. Yes. Can you each take hold of one part of the phone? Can you hold the area near the speaker? I need her to hold the area near the receiver at the bottom. Um, you just want to grasp it between your index finger and thumb. Right there. So if, so if you understand, um, you'll need to hold one side, and she'll need to hold the other. Okay. Okay. Now what I need you to do is, um, can you? we're going to try the voice activation hack. Can you re- repeat after me, please? Yes. Dear Lord. Dear Lord. Please fix this phone. Please fix this phone. (laughs) Dear Lord in heaven, please reach thy divine hand from the sky. Louder, motherfucker, louder. And touch. Touch. Jesus Christ, you are a goddamn fucker. You are a disgusting person. You're a disgrace to the human race. That's all I have to say to you. (laughs) <laughs> we need to get that battery out of hell. I imagine you have a lot of kids too, you fucking scumbag. Hey, hey, are, are you still there? I'm sorry. There must have been some interference there. Um, we're gonna try the uh, swirl intervention hack. Um, do you have a toilet near you? I hope you had a very good time being high tonight because I'm talking to Verizon. Oh, you really? better. Oh, you are talking. To- <laughs> wow, that was legend laughing. That was that was like such. There were there were so many old school people on there. I heard Rappy giggling in the background. I heard Evie giggling in the background. Uh, Tombstone was there. Gunner was there. Gordo, uh, Jen was messaging us from the chat room. And remember the good old days when it was socially acceptable for people to use BlackBerry phones. Those were the days. Anyway, that was 12 minutes long. That was a 12 minute long clip. Probably before this gets to the podcast, I'm going to I'm going to chop that up. So you're going you're going to notice some choppiness in there. But anyway, thanks Micah for finding that call for Hazel. I have another request to find a call. Let's find that email. Oh, it's not a PLA call. This is something completely different. Uh, but this guy MJ Hopefully not the MJ. Uh, He says, hey, Brad, I've been a fan of yours since the 90s, but I've never emailed or anything until now. Your stuff is classic. In the 90s, I was also a fan of a guy named Nate Conroy, a.k.a. Nate the Phone Controller. He had some funny calls, one about crazy descriptions where he would call a 7-Eleven or something and say he was looking for his brother. He's between 20 and 50 years old. Okay, that narrows it down. He has a bird chest and really beady eyes. Oh, this is the description in the prank call. Silly me. Uh, But uh, MJ wants to know if I have any idea what happened to him. He said in another email this was a guy from the 90s. And I'm surprised I've never heard of this guy because I was really into collecting prank call albums in the 90s. So if anyone has ever heard of this guy, Nate Conroy or Nate the Phone Controller, uh, write into the show. Uh, go to phonelosers.org slash contact or leave a voicemail or whatever and tell MJ where you can find this guy. 
Oh, and he has a second request. He says, I had one prank where someone asked what Carlito looked like. And someone in the chat room told me to say Carlito is white with jerry curls and he carries a gold cane. Ha ha, what clip was that? I have no idea. It sounds a little familiar, but yeah, hell if I know. So somebody help him out. Go to phonelosers.org, put a comment in the, in, the sh in the show notes or something. Let's all help each other find old phone call sound clips. That'll be the best. All right, today I'm gonna call some apartments. I, uh, I've i got a lot of requests, and a lot of them, well, uh, a good amount of them are apartment requests. Like this one, it's from David. It says, hey Roy, this is my friend's apartment complex that you should prank. It's more of a condo place, but same thing. It's in Palm Desert, California. Each building has a letter like F, and the unit numbers are three numbers, like F604 is his example. This place sucks, and you should prank them. Thank you for calling the Enclave. This is Linda. How may I help you? Oh, hey, Linda. Um, this is Gary. I'm, um, I live in one of the condos over on Gateway Drive. Okay. And um, What apartment? Uh, it's in uh, F604. Okay. And uh, my water reservoir, it like sprung a leak last night, and it's completely broke open uh, this what morning. In the reservoir? I don't know what that is. Oh, it's like in the bedroom. I had like a giant tank of water. It filled the entire bedroom. And it, 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 compl what? it completely... What was? I'm sorry, what? Okay, what apartment are you in? F604? Uh-huh, yep. But it completely burst open this morning, and it's it, like 10,000 gallons of water has flooded my condo. And it's leaked. Okay, it's leaked. let me come over and see it. What apartment, it's, what's it's, your phone number? It's leaked into the units on either side. The guy next door is saying that his electricity isn't working anymore because of the okay. water. Okay, and do you have any pets? Uh, well, I did, but um, actually my cat drowned this morning. Who is this? Gary. What's your last name, Gary? Thompson. Okay, Gary, who is this really? Because you don't really live in F604. No, I, I do. I'm subletting. <laughs> no, really. Who is this? Well, what's the problem? Why are you not believing me? Uh, because that's our model and nobody lives in the model. Well, I've been squatting there for over three months now. <laughs> really? Who is this? I'm serious. Why, why don't you believe this? Because that's our model. It's, it's livable, though. It works for me. That's awesome. Where should we be sending you the bill? No, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not paying because I'm squatting. Okay. So nobody's going to take care of this reservoir problem? Not in F604. Maybe it's F605. Not. What's your last name, Gary? It's still Thompson. It hasn't changed in the past oh, five yeah, minutes. Oh, did say that. Okay, well, I know Gary Thompson doesn't live in F605. I'm subletting. From the original tenants. Mm. What's the original tenant's name? Oh, hell if I know. I don't know. So, who put you up to this? Nobody. I'm a tenant here. No, you're not a tenant here. How do you know? Have you been because in F I know. F604 lately? I've been yeah. I've been living here go in there every sing I go in there every single day. Oh, you're so full of shit. I do. You're so full of shit. How do you know that? Because I'm in here and nobody's in here. It's just me. No, you're, no, that's our, we go in there every single day. We were just there a little bit ago. Yeah, right. Hmm. So, um, is it a one bedroom or two bedroom? Three bedroom. Which one is it? I don't have to tell you anything about my house. You okay. You nosy bitch. <laughs> you are so funny. Oh. And you say that like it's a bad thing. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, bye. Bye, you have Wow, okay, at least she was amused. So thanks, David, for sending me a uh, an apartment complex model apartment number. I know you didn't tell me to use that one, but still. I blame you. But it's okay, because I have others. And there's others here. I have the Del Prado apartments that uh, Momo sent in. Mamo, Momo... Momo Mamo, he says, Hey Brad, I just want to say I'm a new PLA fan. 
and I've burned through a couple dozen podcasts in the last week or so. He sent this uh, about a month ago, by the way, so he probably is no longer a listener. He'll probably never hear this. You know, people get bored with PLA really quick. Uh, But this is the apartment complex he lives in. Uh, They just got a new property manager after having two shit ones named Mike and Paul something. Right now he's cleaning up the mess left by the other two, so there's something. I went creeping through the hallways a couple days ago and got you two names and apartment numbers for you to give him, as well as some last names and apartment numbers. Uh, He gives me the apartment formatting there. And he sent me pictures of people's packages, I guess, in the mailroom or something. And they're labeled Guy's Package. I love it when people send me pictures of Guy's Packages. Uh, But I guess that's how I will know some apartment names. Third floor is government subsidized, so it always smells like McDonald's and pizza. That makes sense. It's a historic building before World War II, so there are decorative swastikas and creepy Indian head carvings in the lobby. That's what you should have sent pictures of. Oh, wait, he did. Whoa, this is an old building. It's all marbly. Yeah, he sent me a picture where the swastikas are painted over, so you can't really see them. And here's a picture of the Indian heads. I'll put a link to these pictures, I guess, in the show notes. Those are some spooky-ass Indian heads carved into the ceiling. I'm pretty sure your apartment building's haunted. Uh, Momo says he listened recently to the Hole in the Floor podcast, so he feels like it's necessary to say, please don't mention apartment number, and I won't say it. But yeah, um, yeah, you remember that. I actually got the police called on some guy that submitted a number once. He also wants me to send him a sticker. I will send you a sticker, Momo. Thank you for calling Del Prado. Hi, uh, I'm a tenant here at Del Prado in 413. Mm Mm-hmm. How can I help you? And um, part of our wall's kind of caving in, like the ceiling's caving in, I mean. In 413? Yeah, it's between 413 and next door, because I've been dating the girl next door, and we... um, you know, we removed the wall in between our two apartments, but apparently that was a load-bearing wall. We didn't know. And so since we removed... Okay. Let me see. I think maintenance is gone, but let me see. Um, let me get your phone number. Sure. It's uh, it's um, 708-459-2835. And your name? Uh, my name is Michael Boros. Mike. Okay, let me get back in touch with you in a few minutes, okay? Okay. Do you know what I should do about the cave-in and ceiling, though? Should I... St- I will call up, you right back, okay? Stack up a table underneath it or something? Let me let me call you right back. Let me talk to my manager, and I'll call you right back, okay? Okay. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. Well, that sucks, because now she's going to call back. Okay, i got to remember to call her back. Say, hey, what the fuck? Why didn't you call me right back? I'll wait 15 minutes and call her back. Until then, though. Jameson wants me to call her landlord or his landlord. I don't know if Jameson is a girl name or a boy name. Sorry if I'm wrong about that. Uh, there's a bunch of information here about the apartment building. It says they're constantly working on the water and shutting off the water for the entire business day, several days during the year so that maintenance can work on the plumbing. There's a large fountain in the courtyard. Uh, he wants me, he or she wants me to say, you've been filling up the sink in the laundry room, in the basement at night, prior to the water being shut off, and bathing in the filled-up sink. And also, I should notify them about the bidet I installed within the apartment. And I'm very upset that the bidet cannot be used during the times that the water is shut off. They're constantly sending out flyers about all sorts of things, and Jameson would be super happy if uh, they sent out a flyer about bathing in the fountain, or the laundry sink, or installing bidets. Uh, I wouldn't get your hopes up, but I'm going to try. First town in court, this is Megan. Hello, um, I'm one of your tenants on uh, 5 Street. Yeah. And um, I was just having a problem with the bidet in the bathroom. I, I can't, okay. I can't get it to shut off. It's like just high-pressure water. It's like hitting the ceiling really hard. 
Really? Like the handle's stuck or something, and it's squirting straight up at the ceiling. Oh, my goodness. Um, okay, what is your address? I'm in um, number 203. 203? Uh-huh. 203? Okay. And, uh, um, I mean, it's, it's like hitting the ceiling so hard that it's basically raining in there right now. So I think a lot of the water is going downstairs and stuff. And you're at apartment uh-huh. 203? Yep. And your name? Roy. Roy? Um, I'm not familiar with your name or you living in that apartment. Oh, yeah. I'm just staying with the people who live there. And I installed this bidet, um, you know, a few months ago. And it's been fine, but now the handle's stuck. Okay, you installed the bidet. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, they what's have your phone, phone number, Roy? I'd uh, be, um, oh, let's see, 614-3825. Uh, okay. okay. Um, who are the persons that you're staying with? Uh, Roger and Steve. I don't know okay. if they're the official people on the lease, though. I'm not sure... Was the water off today or something? Because I was in the laundry room. I was taking a bath in the sink because my water wasn't working. And then when I got back, the bidet was just stuck on. I don't think anyone had even used it, though. Hmm. I am... Okay, Roy. Yeah? You say your apartment 203. You're staying with a Roger and a Steve. Neither of those names sound familiar to the person that's living at 203. Well, Um, they just hired me to do a lot of renovations in the unit. So, Are you sure you're staying at Townley Court Apartments? Yeah, at 580 East Town Street. Yeah, they they're just uh we we um you know it's like part of the payment. They're just letting me stay there on the couch. <laughs> okay, this is very bizarre. Um I'm just going to tell you cuz 203 this is not all at all matching up. Um Well, there's other people that live here too. I just don't know everyone's names. I just kind of work here. Okay. But um, we've been, like, I, I took out a wall recently. Like no, to you op- didn't. <laughs> this is a joke. This has got to be a joke. Oh, I'm no. really sorry. No, it's definitely not a joke. We just need to get the bidet to shut off. I don't know where the water shut off is. Hmm. Who was that in the background that just spoke? Nobody. Oh, okay. You're hearing things. No. Because I'm the only one here right now. Okay. Um... Well, do me this favor, Roy. Meet me at the front of Townley Court. Oh, you want to fight? You want to fight? No, I don't want to fight. I don't. No, I don't want to fight. Well, that's what I it sounds like to me. It's not a. No, these are not fighting words. This is just a request. Okay. Because when someone tells two, me to meet them and two o three, I'm gonna call those residents now. Um, also to verify. Well, but they're, if they're you not even meet, home. Yeah. Um. So. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm going to call 203, which is the residents that are on the lease. And um, well, Who's on the lease? Them. I don't know if they even live here anymore. Really? What, um, what's well, their name? Like I say, this is all not making any sense, um, but I'm more than happy if you have a flood in your apartment that we need to get obviously looked at. But I'm going to call the residents for 203 and let them know that um, you've got a gentleman by the name of Roy who's knocking out walls and installing bidets. Um, but also I'll call my maintenance and make sure that we don't have a flood going on in the building. Okay, that'd be great. Do you want to meet me? Um, oh, also, I'll meet you. I'll meet you, motherfucker. Are you serious? Oh, no, I just, like, you You just set me off again saying it like that. I oh. feel like you're threatening me. I'm sorry. Okay. It was an accident. Roy, I have your phone number. I'm going to call the resident for 203. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Bye. There you go, Jameson. I just amused the hell out of the girl working at your office. She threatened to fight me. And I don't think she even caught the part about me bathing in the sink. And I'm kind of doubting they're going to send a flyer out about anything I just said. I'm kind of thinking she might have known the whole thing was a joke. But who knows? Man, are you guys noticing the, the staticky sound whenever I change volume levels? Like, uh, she was really quiet, so I kept having to adjust the volume level back and forth. And you can hear it. Now it's not doing it. But, but like, when I, even when I change my music volume. Oh, now it's not doing it. God damn it. I swear it was doing it. It's been doing it for weeks. I'm going to have to get a new mixer. I just got this mixer, like, less than a year ago, and it's, it's 
doing the thing with the knobs where it's all staticky every time I move the knobs. So thanks a lot, Carlito and Sloth, for recommending this mixer to me. Real good choice you got for me there. I need to get slider switches instead of knobs, like the professionals use. Okay, I still think it's too early to call that person back. I mean, it's probably not, but I want to be sure. You know, the first apartment, the one where my wall's collapsing. Let's see what else I have. I do have this one. Uh, this is... This is a business for an electronics store. And I'm looking at it on Street View, and there is actually a karate store next door. So I bet you guys can guess what I'd really like to do on this one. Take a guess. <laughs> karate store next door, to, nor, next door to a business. So I've got the karate store's number, and that's going to be my caller ID. And he's probably not going to answer because, I don't know, maybe he'll answer. Let's see. This is NBS Electronics, Lord Valve speaking. NBS Electronics takes Whoa. orders from internet customers Monday through Saturday from approximately 8.30 a.m. until... What did he say? His name was Lord something? This is NBS Electronics, Lord Valve speaking. Lord Valve? Lord Val? Dana, who submitted this, says his name is Fat Willy. So I'm picturing a fat guy named Willie pretending. NBS Electronics. Oh, hello. Is this uh, Willie? Yeah. Hey, uh, this is Sensei Doug. I'm, I'm next door at the karate store. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was wondering, look, um, when, whenever you walk by, uh, you know, come in your store, you're, you're just always looking at me. Can you just stop looking at me? I, are you kidding? No. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. Well, it's just Okay, like, wait a second now. I feel threatened. Are you talking about... Like when I walk by your store? Yeah, you're just looking I, at me. I, I look inside your store? Yeah, you're looking at me. You're like looking straight at me and giving me this look like you, you want to fight or something. And I mean, I'm not the type of person to come out and just fight people. I know I know karate. I know hey, I could kick on, your ass on, and everything. Dude. Now look, but <laughs> I don't know where you got the idea that I'm looking at you. Okay. But you're looking but at me all the time. When I walk by there, I'm on my way somewhere else. I may look in through the through the door or something and just to see what's going on in there but i'm not looking at anybody in particular oh, oh bullshit you're and looking if you at you walked me. out the door right now i wouldn't even recognize you i don't pay that much attention oh why are you always glaring at me then you're just looking at me like you're giving me this this f you look well i just cut it out i That's have i have no idea why you would feel that way really I, I think when you walk by my place maybe you should turn your back to the to the store and walk sideways. Uh, I think you're full of crap. Well, now, who put you up to no, this? No, you're, you're the one that's doing this to me. I'm not full of I'm crap. I'm not doing anything to you, dude. I don't even know who you are. Well, then I have no idea who you are. Well, do you just look at strangers like that? I'm not like, looking at anything in particular. Are, are, you, are, you, are you just, you just like to start crap with everyone around you? I, don't I see what You know what? I haven't said a word to you. I don't know who you are. I know. You don't say anything to me. You just look at me. Just look, give me that look. You just need to stop looking at me. You know, you, you if you want to walk out front so I can see who you are... Oh, you know who I am. I'll make I, absolutely sure that I never look at your ass again. Oh, now you're going to curse at me. You know, I don't I have a problem with... I will never look at your... At your bottom again. I don't have a problem with anyone else on the street. You're the only one that's trying to start shit with me. Just looking at me I every time you I haven't tried to start shit with anybody. Now, you talk to Sensei Yaguchi, and you tell him you have a problem with me. He told me I should and call you. You know, I, I'm still telling you, I don't even know who you are. I'm not looking at you. You look at me every single time you walk by. You just, like, look right in the window and just stare me down. Like you're trying to trying to just threaten me or something, trying to intimidate well, me. Well, 
You know, I'm sorry you feel that way, but I'm not. That's not what I'm doing. You are I don't too. even know who you are. You are too. And if you, if you keep it up, I'm going to call the police. I don't even care well, anymore. I, you know what? You better go ahead and do that. Because I, I shouldn't have to feel threatened at my job. I don't see why you should feel threatened. I don't know who you are. I, I, did, I would not recognize you if I passed you on the street. You would too, because you look at me every day when you walk by. You just look right in the window and, and give I me don't, this. I, I don't walk by every day. Every day that you do walk by, smart ass. <clears throat> oh, no, you're going to cuss with me, huh? You just need to cut it out. Why don't you just cut it out? Why don't you just mind well, your own I, business? You know what? There, there's you no reason relax, our, dude. our businesses can't I'm not coexist. I'm at you. I don't care what you do. You look at me all the time. I don't know time. who you are. I don't bear you any ill will. I don't know who you are. I you're, don't even know where this is coming from. You're being passive aggressive. That's what you're doing. <laughs> you, you, you think, you know... You, you know, you're really starting to sound like somebody put you up to this. That sounds like a joke to me. Oh, it's a, it's a joke to you. It's not a joke to me because I'm just trying to do my job here, and, and you're just coming in and and make trying to make problems for in. everyone. I've never set foot in that building. Ever. I, you're walking up not to the once. front and you're just looking at not me. Not once in 22 years that I've been here next to that building have I ever set foot inside. Okay, it. fine. Every time you walk by in front, you're looking at me and you're trying to just start problems with the people here. I'm not trying to start problems with anybody. And you want you don't want to start problems with people at No Karate, okay? That's exactly right, and I'm I'm surprised that you couldn't figure that out. Well, maybe you should figure it out and stop doing it. Stop doing what you're doing. All right. Let me lay something on you, my friend. Oh, go ahead. You're telling me that I'm trying to start shit with you, and you're sounding like you want to come kick my ass. No, I just want you to stop. Uh, just let me, cut let it me, out. Let me put something on you, okay? Just stop. I'm 66. I got a pacemaker and a bad leg. Now, you think I'm trying to start shit with anybody? What, are you nuts? Well, that's why you're just being all passive-aggressive about it. I don't even know what passive-aggressive means. Well, you're obviously not that smart if you're trying to start problems with yes, people I'm not at the karate smart, place. Okay, I must be fucking stupid. That's what it is. So why don't you just leave the fucking retard alone? Okay, okay. okay. I'm done with you. Well, well stop doing what you're doing. <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh, did, did I just mess with a guy with a pacemaker and a broken leg? <laughs> Lord Val? I feel like I should call him back and be like, ah, just kidding. It was Dana. Dana put me up to it. Dana, what what, what did this guy do to you that, that you made me call him? Oh, <laughs> uh, the, the, um... Uh, Dana's idea, which I completely ignored. I always ignore ideas. Uh, she wanted me to tell him that I needed to get my flamethrower fixed. <laughs> Let's call back. NBS Electronics. Oh, also, I forgot to ask. I need to get my flamethrower fixed. How much does that cost? You know, if you're who I think you are, you're making a bad fucking mistake. What do you... What do you... <laughs> you were right, Dana. <laughs> That made him pissed. But at least now he knows it's a joke. He doesn't feel like uh, he needs to go talk to the karate guy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so thanks, Dana. That was fun. You, you better watch watch your back, Dana, because Lord Val, he's gonna he's gonna come after you for this. There's just this big row of businesses on that street too. I just want to call every single one of them. Like on the other side of the electronics store, there's a liquor store. And then there's like a bar or restaurant next to that. They're just asking to be pranked. Every single one of them. I need to do that someday. I need to pick a downtown area of a small town somewhere. Oh look, there's Lee's Appliances. And just prank every single business. Turn them all against each other. Start a bunch of fights in the street. And I should do that where there's a live webcam pointing at the uh, at the, the downtown area so I can watch. I can watch all the huge battle duels that will happen out in the street. Okay, I think it's I, I think I'm okay to call that that first place back. Del Prado Apartments. Thank you for calling the Del Prado. 
sorry we missed you. So clearly what's happened here is uh, they've they've evacuated the entire building because it's uh, structurally unsound since I moved that retaining wall on the fourth floor. So, entire complex in Chicago has been evacuated thanks to me. So Momo, I hope I didn't get you evacuated too. I think you live just down the hall from this guy. Thank you for calling the Delta. Well, crap. I will try that one again before the show ends. Hey, I wrote down some failed pranks, and I, it's probably pointless because I haven't done this for everyone, but I did it for a couple people. Uh, but you know, people send me all these pranks and they don't always work out. Uh, for example, I tried calling Andrea Hatcher. Uh, the submitter claimed that Andrea would get mad at anything, but she never answered. I tried for for like an entire week. I tried calling Andrea. Went, I tried with multiple caller IDs. I called her over and over and over and had no luck. So that never worked out. And then uh, AJ, I pranked your landlord. And they didn't believe me at all because the address she gave me didn't have anyone living at it. And uh, I told them that I cut down all the trees in the yard. It was like a house that was for rent. And... Uh, one of the trees had knocked down a power line, the other tree had fallen into the window. Uh, I tried saying I was squatting there, but they didn't believe me, of course. Thank you for calling Depp Auto. Oh, hey, this is Michael Borosh again. Hi, I've been trying to get in touch with you. We've been trying to get... We've knocked on your door twice because we needed to get a visual of what's going on. Oh, I was in the bathroom. Is, is it possible I can come up and take a look at it? I was in the shower. Well, here's the thing. It, it's caved in even more, and now all these gold coins are falling from the area where we cut out. So, uh, but Can I come up and take a look at it? They're coming from kind of in the middle. So, like, do you know, well, are, do I get ownership of all the gold coins, or is it the apartment's property? Okay. Is it possible for me to come up and take a look at it? Well, I want to I wanna get all the gold coins out of the wall first and put them in a safe because I don't want you stealing them. But they have like Nazi symbols on them. And, Where are the gold coins coming from? They're from the ceiling because I chopped out the entire wall in between my apartment and the, the girl's apartment next door. And I guess there was like a bunch of gold coins, doubloons, stashed up there. And they're all kind okay. of... Okay. So um... So I've got to get all these. Somebody from somebody from maintenance is coming to take a look at that. Okay, I oh, just call it emergency maintenance. So somebody is coming to take a look at it. Well, okay. I'm not letting anyone in to like because I mean this is these are a lot of gold coins. This has to be worth millions, I would think. And and I don't want maintenance stealing my gold coins. Are these your coins? Well, they are now because they're in my apartment. Okay, give me a number where I can reach you because the number you gave me is disconnected. Oh, it was okay. Um. Well, my home phone is 773-6841. Okay, I will get back but, in touch with you, okay? So so officially, though, I mean, the gold coins would be mine, right? Because they're in my apartment? Let me, let, me, let me give you a call right back, okay? Or, I mean, I could share them with the girl next door because we are seeing each other. We'll probably just split let the coins. Let me give you a call right back, well, okay, Mr. Don't, Boris? Don't be a jerk about it. I'm just asking a question. I understand what you're saying, but I need to speak to somebody to find out to answer your question, okay? About the gold coins? So let me... Let me, yes, and in reference to the wall and the ceiling being caved in. So okay. let me call you right back, okay? There, there's a water leak, too, by the way. There was a pipe in the wall, and, like, when the ceiling okay. collapsed, it kind of... All right, I will call you right back. Let me call buckled. you right back, okay? Well, can I call you back? All right, thank you. Okay. Yes, that's fine. Okay, thank you. five Bye. minutes, six minutes. <laughs> okay, I got to make a call. One more call before the, show's ends. before the show ends. The plot thickens. Gold doubloons. Water pipes buckling. And by the way, there's no reason that I'm not doing the show live today. Uh, I'm in the chat room. I'm on the, the PCN chat room. And uh, yeah, there's just no reason for it. I'm just doing this not live. Sorry. I swear I haven't quit doing live shows. I'm just not doing it today for some reason. It's really no reason at all. Just like when I, I canceled my Comcast service uh, and, and they wanted a reason. There was no reason. It's just the way it is. Stop badgering me, listeners. I'm not going to give you a reason. So here's an apartment building from PyCon. Uh, PyCon actually does not say, oh, these guys are a bunch of assholes. PyCon says it's a good apartment company. That's weird. 
apartments. Uh, he gives me the the numbering system of the apartments, which is always nice. If you submit an apartment number, if you submit an apartment complex, give me some some sample apartment numbers. Tell me how they're uh, formatted and stuff. So I don't say like I'm in apartment 312 when the apartments are like 11659. PyCon wants me to complain about too many black people. By the way, PyCon says he's been lurking around the PLA world for many years. He used to read the PLA book at work and it made his job bearable. And he even took apart a, a stupid, his, his stupid toaster looking for that radio crystal to turn his handheld CB radio into a drive through radio. So PyCon's an idiot. He fell for my joke. Sorry, PyCon. I don't mean that. You're not an idiot. Oh, man. The lady at the other <laughs> apartment building right now, just, just imagine she's explaining to the apartment owners, like, yeah, there's gold doubloons, millions of dollars, <laughs> gold doubloons falling out of his ceiling. He wants to know if they're his. He won't answer his door. <laughs> I guess I should call in soon before maintenance, you know, breaks the door down and finds out there's no missing walls. <laughs> anyway, Brookfield Apartments. Let's give them a call. Thank you for calling Brookfield. Tanisha speaking. How may I help you? Hello, Tanisha. This is Rob. I'm a tenant here. How are and, you? Oh, pretty good. Um, I was just wondering, like, if you guys might have any extra carpet, like, for all the, the carpet that you guys use, because mine's um, got burn marks all What I can do, I can take your number and find out. Okay. Like, um, do you know... What is your telephone number? Uh, it'd be 972-2989. I've actually been barbecuing... Okay, uh-huh. Well, I'm Just sorry. some carpet pieces? Yeah, I've been barbecuing in the living room. And, oh, okay. And the, you know, the, there, there was just kind of like um, flames falling out of the barbecue grill and it burned up giant patches of carpet all over the living room. Okay. So like when it burned up one patch, I just, I moved it over to, to a different part of the living room. Okay. And then it burned up another patch because some, some sparks flew out. Okay. Um, can you hold just one moment? Okay. And what unit did you say you were in? Oh, I didn't. I'm in 1214. Okay, hold just one moment. Elegance, sophistication, and convenience. Yes. Those are just three words to describe the Brookfield apartment community. Thing for everyone here at Brookfield. Our high-quality apartment community is perfect for singles, couples, and young families. Have a pet? No problem. This is Hester. Hello. Hi. How can I help you? Oh, are you the same person I was talking to before? Mm, no, I think you were talking to Tarnisha. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Did she tell you why I'm calling? She just said something about your carpet. Oh, yeah. Like a bunch of my carpet got burned up today from the barbecue grill. Uh -huh. I was barbecuing inside because it was kind of hot outside today. Okay. So I was just wondering, like, um, do you have any spare carpet? Like, so I could just cut out the burn parts and just glue the carpet down? No, we don't, we don't handle carpet. We always contract that out. Oh, you don't have like just any spare carpet, like just laying around? Mm -mm. No, we, I mean like if we did it on house, yes, but we, since we call them, they install it and remove it. So whatever they remove, they take. Oh, well, can I have the name of the carpet company? I'll just do it through them. I'll just ask them if they have any spare carpet. Um, hold on. Is that a problem, though? Like, if I just, when I move out, there's just a bunch of, that's chopped up and replaced carpet? You'll probably get charged for it. Really? Oh. Mm hmm Hold on, let me see if I can find it. It's Dixie Carpet. Okay. And it's uh, 214. Okay. 4500. Okay. And I, I can just tell them to charge it to the apartment building? To charge it to what? I mean, you guys, I guess, have an account there. Can I just have, have them put it on your account? No. Well, I can't pay for it. I don't have the money. No. I mean, like, you're basically, you would pretty much get charged for it. Yeah, but unless I tell them to put it on your account. I'm just going to do that. I'll just see if they'll do it. You can't do that. I mean, I probably You'll can. You'll get charged for it. Yeah, but I'll get new carpet at least. Until then. 
What do you mean? You can't you can't call in and request the order without the manager's approval. I'll I'll just say I got the so, approval though. It'll be our little secret. No, we can't do that. Is it okay to barbecue in our living room? No, it's not. Um, I think there's a lot of sm like the walls. They all look a lot darker now. I think because of the smoke from the barbecue. You'll probably get charged for that too. There's like soot all over the. Because I've been barbecuing in here last. Didn't you get the letter about barbecuing? Oh, what did it say? You're not allowed to barbecue. It has to be ten feet away from the building. I know, but it's it's ten feet inside the building. Like my room. It should be outside, <laughs> not inside. Outside. Oh, well, it didn't say that because I'm like in the middle of the room and my room is uh, 12 by 14. So I think that makes it 10 feet away from the walls, right? I'm not it very... It has to be outside the building. It didn't say that in the letter. It say no barbecuing at all. But then you're saying not at all, but then 10 feet away, which is it? As far as barbecuing, it's not permitted inside but you can do it outside for 10 feet away from the building okay well it didn't say that we weren't allowed to do it inside because I, I didn't want to go 10 feet away from the building it's hot outside so i just did it inside so you guys wouldn't see but but then like some flames kind of you know kicked up and got on the carpet and the carpet caught on fire uh -huh. i mean like you'll just get charged for it okay it was pretty much the entire right. living room. And then I kind of drug it over into the kitchen. So, like, the kitchen tiles have got a lot of fire damage now, too. <laughs> That's, I mean, like, all that, she'll walk it and you'll get charged for it. Yeah, pretty much the entire carpet's burned up. But on the upside, I had this major flea problem. And I think all the fleas are dead now because they burned in the fire. Oh, you have a pet? Yeah, I have two cats. Oh, we don't see no pet deposit on you. Well, yeah, I didn't want to pay the pet deposit. Um, well, now you have a pet rent, too. Well, no, no, it's fine. There's no problem with my pets. They're house trained and everything. Oh, yeah, but it's a policy. You have to pay a pet oh. rent for it. Well, them. no, I don't have pets. Just forget what I said about the fleas, okay? All right, but um, as far as the carpet goes and stuff, like I said, she'll, uh, she can go Monday and walk it and let you know how much the charges are going to be. Okay. All righty. Okay. And um, also, I was wondering about our fuse mm -hmm. box. What fuse box? You know, there's a breaker panel in here, like, f to turn on the mm -hmm. power and all that. Uh, uh-huh. The power company said I needed to get the apartment's approval because I need to... Um, have that converted to a 600 volt fuse box and like 3000 amps I don't think that's possible oh no they said it's possible I just have to get permission no I know that's what I'm saying I don't think you'll get the permission for it oh but I need the extra power um, I don't know about that you might want to talk to her Monday when she goes to walk to your apartment who's coming to my apartment Alicia, the manager. Oh, no, she can't come in. Not with this mess here. I, I, mean, I, like she, I mean, like, as far as walking for to see the carpet and all that, she'll let you know um, okay. as far as damages goes and stuff or charges. Yeah, I need an advance. I need advance notice if she comes by because I have to get a pet sitter. Well, it, that's what I'm saying. It could be Monday or Tuesday. Oh, well, is there any way I could find out for she sure? she don't work on the weekends. I don't want to pay extra money for a pet sitter. Mm, I'm, I don't know. I mean, like, I'm just letting you know what she would do. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, also, I've broken into the, like, you know, I, I uh, kind of hammered into the wall for next door for, uh -huh. where, for where their stove's plugged in in the kitchen. Because I, I, uh -huh. needed, I needed the extra power, so I tapped into their uh, 200 and... 40 volt power line can you hold and on for one second okay wood laminate again board. come on balcony or patio custom mini blinds i need to Double just let this one go things. designer accent walls linen closet okay screw it i'm i'm that that's not gonna go anywhere else anyway so 
I need to call the 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 one place about the gold doubloons. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, they they've probably been into the apartment by now. Thank you for calling the Del. All right, she's still not picking up. The Del Prado lady. She's had enough of the bullshit over the phones today. She's just not going to answer anymore. All right, uh, let's see. I have one more. Uh, thanks, PyCon, by the way. PyCon, whatever your name is. For the, uh, the other apartment I just called. I have one more. But wait, wait. Let's, let's do something else first. Let's do this. Let's play some voicemails. Hi, RB. So I heard all these people calling in and saying jokes. Oh, I think that's great. pretty gay. So great. instead, I'm going to give you an ancient Greek hypothora by Socrates. And it goes like this. What do you get when you cross a telephone in a pair of pants? Bell bottoms. Uh -huh. Yay. That was yeah. the best. Okay. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Great joke. Uh, not a joke. Whatever you said it was. Something about Socrates. What do you get if you cross a phone Olga. with a birthday celebration? A party line! Wait, I didn't mean to hear that, sorry. What do you get if you cross a phone with a birthday celebration? A party line! Uh, I get it. How does a barber make phone calls? He cuts them short. And finally, what kind of phone does a turtle use? Oh, I know, I know. A shell phone! I knew that one somehow. Bye. Bye, Olga. <laughs> Nobody can compare to Olga's jokes. That's all the voicemails, though. If you want to leave a voicemail, the number is 814-422-5309. Let's try the Del Prado one more time, and then I'll call this last apartment building. Thank you for calling Del Prado. Oh, hey, it's Michael again. Hi. Hi. Uh, uh, let me put you on hold for one moment, okay? Why? Okay. Why? Hold on one second, okay? What, Hold on. What? All right. Michael? Yes? Hold on one moment. I have maintenance on the line. Hold on. Okay. Hey, Michael. This oh. is Joseph. This who? This is Joseph, the maintenance guy. Oh, Del hey. Prado. How you doing? Um, you Good. got some water leaking up there? Yeah, well, I, I've got... I've sort of taken care of that. I put duct tape because the pipe was kind of buckling out from the... You know, from the stress of the ceiling... Crushing down on top of it. Mm -hmm. You mind if I come take a look at it? Oh, not today. I've got to sort through all these things. Um, th there's like gold doubloons coming from the ceiling. And I've got to okay. get the rest of them out and, and put them in a safe or something. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Bye. But are, is the other lady still on? <coughs> Ma'am? Ma'am? <laughs> what? Thank you for calling Del Prado. Oh, um, I, I got disconnected from the maintenance guy somehow. Okay, but, how can I help? Oh, I was just wondering, because I, like, I was looking under the floor from where this pu this water pipe's coming from, and there's like all these old stock certificates from the night. Okay, you need to let somebody into the unit so they can see what's going on, Mr. Boris. Well, I got to... Okay? I got to... Uh, Somebody needs to get in to take a look at the unit, okay? It, it's going to... What I'm saying, it's going to be a while because I've got to hang up these stock certificates. They got wet from the pipe. Okay, and, Mr. Boris. And I think they're they worth a lot of money. They need to in to take a look, Mr. Boris. They need to get in to take a look at the unit to well, see what's going well, on, okay? Maybe tomorrow because I got the pipe all... It's taken care of. I duct taped it. So there's no more leaking. Okay, Mr. Mr. Boris. Um, hold on one moment, okay? All right. Hold on. All this right. Is hold on. All right. There, let's get some water sound effect noises for when she comes back. <laughs> There's no water problem, I swear. Okay, I, I give up. I've been on hold for 20 minutes now. I think they forgot about me. I, I'll call back, I guess, and see if they pick up. But I guess I should just be done with this one. Thank you for calling Del Prado. Oh, hey, it's Michael. Oh, I got put on hold and I never heard back. What can I do for you, Mr. Boris? Um, I just, um, couldn't we just wait till tomorrow for someone to come by? Somebody will come tomorrow at 1 o'clock. 
Oh, that might be too early because i got to dry out all these stock certificates. Um, they're coming tomorrow at 1 o'clock, Mr. Boris. That's the time they're scheduled. It's 1 o'clock tomorrow. Well, I might not answer. I might not be around because i I'll, I'll, got to go to the safety deposit box and put all these stock certificates. There's over 800. Okay, Mr. 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 Boris, somebody needs to get in that unit and it's scheduled for 1 o'clock tomorrow. But there's, okay? o there's over 800 gold coins here, so I have to make sure I get those put away. gold coins and how many stock certificates did you find? Uh, I don't know. It's just like a giant okay, stack Mr. of them. Okay, Mr. Boris, I have spoken to the chief of, of maintenance. He set it up for 1 o'clock tomorrow. That's all I can do, okay? Okay. Since well, you won't let them in to check today because the maintenance guy is here. You, will you let him in to just take a look at the wall and see? Um, maybe tomorrow if, if I've got okay, everything ready. Okay, well, then it's set up for tomorrow at 1 o'clock, okay? I, I, so I don't, will be there tomorrow at 1. I, just, I don't want the maintenance guy stealing my gold doubloons. Somebody will be in your unit tomorrow at 1 o'clock, Mr. Boris. Is okay? he honest? Do you know if he's like an honest guy? Mr. Boris. Yes? Tomorrow at 1 o'clock, okay? Okay. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Bye-bye. I forgot to ask her why she didn't, why she just put me on hold forever. Anyway, thanks again for the, uh, for that apartment submission, Momo. I've got one left to call here. Uh, this one is from a guy named Big Pan. He wants me... He says it would be awesome if I called his apartment building and tell them that someone's making meth in their apartment. There's three buildings, and he tells me how the apartments are set up. Uh, he didn't tell me which apartment number he's in, so there's always the chance that I'm going to end up giving Big Pan's apartment number by accident. that happens. Sorry. You've reached the general mailbox for J.G. McSherry Incorporated. Please leave a message including Aww. your phone number. It's closed because it's uh, it's over on the East Coast, so it's, um, it's too late. So I can't call this last one. So damn it, they're closed. Uh, I guess I'll have to call them on the next show if I do a show early enough. Let me dig through the request. I don't think there's any more apartments. Here's a request that I've been putting off forever now. Uh, I talked about this on a previous show. I don't think I deleted it, but um, it's, it's Rent-A-Ho. The name of the company is called Rent-A-Ho, as in, you know, a backhoe. And um, the person who submitted this uh, found a picture on Imgur of a girl wearing a shirt that says Rent-A-Ho on the back with the phone number. So he gave me the phone number from the shirt. And I'm going to guess that these people are probably used to getting prank calls. So, uh... I don't know how successful this one's going to be. Hello, rent a hoe. Hello, I just needed to find out how much it would cost to rent a hoe for a few hours. What size? Um, I don't know. I like them kind of fat in the butt, but not too fat. You know, average size oh, you, breasts. Oh, you got you got the wrong company. Oh, this is not rent a hoe. Sorry. Is this rent a hoe or not? What the fuck? What? She she said right on the phone, it's rent a -ho. How is this the wrong company? Horrible customer service. Oh, she just hung up that time. Alright. I gotta make my call come from a Walmart this time. That'll fool her. I have reached rent a hoe. We're not available right now. We'll leave a message and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks. Okay, I'll make my number local to them. That'll get them to pick up, right? Hello, this is Shelly from rent a hoe. Please leave your name and number. Goddamn Shelly. I wonder if Shelly is a rented hoe or if she's like a full-time employee. Hello, rent a hoe. Hi, would the hoe have to come to my house, or would I just need to meet her at a hotel? Wow, you're calling from the New Jersey number two now. That's just very creative of you, very creative. We've never had these phone calls before. Never? You're a little too old to be doing that. You really do. Go I'm the get first? a light, jerk off. <laughs> I'm a jerk off? <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> oh, she is clearly used to that kind of a phone call. I almost threw this one away because I, I wasn't going to call this because I knew they would be used to these phone calls. But I tried. I did my best. 
she she uh, owned me in the end so thanks a lot person who submitted this for allowing me to get owned by an old lady who is clearly sick of prank calls in the show notes i will put a link to the picture of the shirt that the girl's wearing with rentaho written on it because it's kind of amusing so phonelosers.org go look at the crazy wacky shirt from the crazy wacky people who do not like prank calls and call me a jerk off and I guess that's it it's time to quit show's over everyone thanks for the submissions everyone Big Pan I will get to yours on the next show everyone uh, you know add us on Facebook slash phone losers twitter.com slash phone losers and of course support the show patreon.com slash phone losers and I'll do more shows every week I promise It'll happen. Eventually. 